So this video is on Bradbury and Williams, which is listed on the spec as your contemporary study. This means that this is a high probable 16 marker on its own, uh, describing and evaluating this contemporary study. Now, race and crime have been discussed for many years, this including whether certain races are overrepresented in crime statistics and prisons, or if certain races are treated differently at various stages within the criminal justice process. The work of Bradbury and Williams provides an up-to-date evaluation of the work previously undertaken by Abwender and Hoff, which was a really influential study looking into the influence of defendant characteristics within mock trials. So the aim of this study is to examine whether the racial makeup of a jury affects its decision making. And they tested two hypotheses. So hypothesis one was black defendants will be more likely to be convicted by juries composed of a higher number of white jurors. Whereas hypothesis two was that black defendants will be more likely to be convicted by juries composed of a higher number of Hispanic jurors. So data was collected from real trials in four American states and the cases chosen were ones in which there was a hung jury, so where the jury could not agree on whether the defendant was guilty or not. Data included demographic characteristics of the jury, jury selection and the offence type and only trials that included black defendants were examined. Now the dependent variable, so what was measured within this study, is whether or not the trial resulted in a conviction whereas the independent variable that was manipulated within the study was the racial makeup of the jury, so whether it was mostly black, mostly white, or mostly Hispanic. Now, they included seven control variables to measure the strength of the prosecution case to make sure that there was a sufficient case for the jury to decide on. And these control variables were the presence of written instructions to the jury, the quantity of evidence, the strength of the case, the case type, so whether it was violence, property or drug offences, the length of the trial, whether the lawyer was public or private, the length of the jury deliberations. Now, in order to assess whether there was a significant relationship, the researchers undertook complex statistical analysis, including the logistic regression. Now, don't worry too much about this, but the nature of this statistical test is basically helping them to identify which juror characteristics may have influenced the decision making. Now, a logistic regression is basically a statistical analysis that examines the relationship between the IV and the DV, allowing them to calculate the probability of them being related. So, Bradbury and Williams' key findings were that black defendants are less likely to be convicted by juries comprised, composed mostly of black jurors. Now, juries that were compromised mostly of white juries uh, were more likely to convict the black defendants. And their finding is statistically significant at the level of P is less of 0.01. So it is highly significant. Now, the juries who are compromising mostly Hispanic jurors are more likely to convict black defendants. And this is significant, but only to the level of P being less than 0.1. It's also found that black defendants are less likely to be convicted of violent and property crimes than drug crimes. So the conclusion here is that diversity within the jury pool is likely to have an impact on the outcome of their decision making. So black defendants are more likely to be convicted if the percentage of the other ethnicity of the jurors is higher than the percentage of black jurors. Now, the selection process of jury members can therefore bias the outcome of the trial. So evaluation. Well, the data represented characteristics of actual jury trials as opposed to mock jury trials. So this therefore is providing more reliable data regarding actual jury decision making than an experiment undertaken in a laboratory would have done. Now, we can therefore consider the findings to be more ecologically valid than other research. There were also a number of control variables to ensure that they were truly investigating the race composition of the jury rather than other factors. And this ensures a level of validity within the research. And these factors can be confidently applied to the area of race. Now, this study is also a content analysis using quantitative and qualitative data. Now, the quantitative data is obviously then less subjective because it's not open to interpretation by the researcher. And therefore, the chance of researcher bias is a lot smaller. As it is so rare to get data from actual trials, it is difficult to be sure that the findings are representative of all trials because the findings may reflect an unknown uniqueness to the trial and the jury members that may or may not have been applicable to similar trials. 
the general absence of real life research does make this quite uncertain for us. It's not possible either to control all the variables within the research, so other factors may have influenced the jury's decision here, including their own personal experiences of a crime and their own personal biases to any pretrial publicity that may have occurred. And this may have had an unknown impact on the jury members, which, due to involving real life trials, was not possible to control, despite the attempts to control the many, as many variables as they have. Equally, the case only focuses here on black defendants, and the findings therefore may not be applicable to other cases in which the defendant's race is not black. Further research is required into other ethnic groups before it's possible to determine whether the effect found within the current research is applicable to all races.